so I'll, I'll whenever we 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 think about innovation and creativity, and and uh, for the past fifteen years development as well, uh, one idea that keeps regurgitating itself is is that of intellectual property. <coughs> And I'd like to talk a little bit more about about the role of IP and and a few other a uh, uh, few other policies that affect IP and innovation. Uh, what I won't be talking about today is our free and open source software, open standards. Though I believe both of these are are very important, uh, especially if we're talking about sustainability, and 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 both are things that we should uh, look at very seriously. I won't be talking about open government data, and, and in this regard, let me just uh, uh, note that I'm a little bit less confident than, than uh, Mr. Abhishek Singh, uh, because I think that the current draft of the open uh, national data uh, sh uh, accessibility and sharing policy is a bit weak. And, and I won't be talking about software patents, because I've, I've given that talk many times before, and, and can talk to you about that privately. Instead, I will talk about about uh, innovation, and and uh, especially innovations in the ICD sphere that affect access to knowledge. Uh, for right now, since there isn't much time, I'll tr uh, I'll mostly confine myself to to hardware, and and, uh, and not talk so much about software or content uh, related innovations. Now, access to knowledge is affected by, by technology, is affected by the devices and hardware that you use to access, uh, say, the internet, uh, or, or say, uh, any kind of information, say, uh, a message uh, from, from a health worker. So Now, most technology uh, is, is stuff that is presented to us by the West. And that is what is called innovation. Uh, innovation is generally that one giant leap in, in technology. And, and that is not how uh, uh, we at the Center for Internet and Society uh, look at innovation. And uh, we are right now embarking on a, on a two and a half year study on, on uh, one aspect of, of innovation, uh, which I'll talk a little bit about in the six minutes remaining. Uh, so we are asking some questions such as what is the relationship between uh, the production and deployment of pervasive technologies and intellectual property? And by pervasive technologies, we are talking we are talking about technology that's that's everywhere that that you don't really notice, and specifically technology that is cheap. Uh, so think sub hundred dollar technology, technology like mobile phones. What lessons uh, do uh, these hold for the future of both intellectual property and access to knowledge? And what does it mean for these technologies to be produced and used in an intellectual property regime like those of the European Union and, and uh, whether they would have any kind of future in, in the world's strictest copyright regimes and patent uh, regimes? And these questions we, we believe are very important to ask and to understand and to study because we are moving towards stronger and stronger patent laws, stronger and stronger copyright laws, stronger and stronger enforcement of the already existing very, uh, high, uh, uh, very high threshold laws, right? And, and how is that going to affect uh, innovation uh, that we see? For instance, uh, you don't see phones like the black cherry coming out of out of the west you only see the blackberries and the blackberries are expensive whereas the black cherries from china are very inexpensive and offer all the same features you don't see phones that have projectors built into them coming out of the west you don't see dual sim phones and unlocked phones at that for instance coming out of major markets like like uh, united states and even out of markets such as Brazil, uh, you don't see phones with FM radios, with, with uh, built-in packaging of double batteries, of, with, with l really loud speakers. You don't see all of that. And some things which you do see nowadays, such as uh, the new uh, Nexus S that I have, with, with two 
uh, cameras. Okay, those are the kinds of innovations that have been developed here in 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 Asia first, and then have been copied by by Samsung. So there are uh, j just to make a few of the of the things that we that we've already found from from very preliminary research, just to highlight them. One, there is significant intellectual property presence in pervasive technologies. Two, uh, intellectual property increases the cost of hardware uh, very often substantially. Three, patent thickets and, and patent royalties make it difficult for new entrants in the market as well as domestic manufacturers. Uh, it makes it difficult for them to compete in the global market space. Uh, marketplace, I beg your pardon. And, and this is one area where, where competition law, I hope, uh, will be used increasingly in the future to level the, 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 uh, uh, the marketplace and make it even, make it uh, accessible to, to the smaller players, to make it accessible for domestic players to, to compete against larger ones. We have noticed that governments <coughs> configure industrial policies Including, including intellectual property policies and, and standards policies to reduce outgoing royalties and to maximize domestic IP. Now, this is something that, that China has done to a great extent, and India has not done as much. Uh, and, and we'd like to study uh, in, in detail the implications of this, how far it has worked, how far it hasn't worked, because not all the experiments that China has done with regard to standards uh, have been successes, uh, but many of them have, and and so we'd like to to uh, to study that a bit further. And uh, and there are also other non-IP, not directly patent law uh, policies, but related to patent law policies. For instance, around uh, around foreign exchange that uh, the RBI imposed in the early 90s. Uh, which limited the amount of, of uh, royalties that you could uh, you could include as part of a product to five percent. Okay, so the outgoing forex on a particular product in form of royalties could only be up to five percent. The interesting thing is we removed this uh, in the late 90s. Yet China still has a similar uh, law in its books uh, that caps it at five percent. So, uh, and, and this is something that, that we're uh, trying to, to uh, dig up more information on, and it hasn't proven that very easy, but uh, something we are going to look into. And we've also noticed that governmental uh, policy interventions have, uh, in at least uh, some instances, led to price drops for both manufacturers and for consumers. And this, at the end of the day, I think is the, is the most important lesson that that governmental policies with regard uh, industrial policies and and ip related policies uh really do change uh the marketplace and and uh i have absolutely uh no time i have around 30 seconds more so uh just a few things that uh that i'd like to uh, point out uh that there are a few other things such as uh patent pooling which are uh, often uh, uh, done at the instance of states, uh, which do lead to, uh, lead to reduction in cost because of reduction in transaction costs. That, uh, that for instance, uh, I, I believe in a recent speech, uh, Mr. Kapil Sibyl uh, noted that, that in around 10 years' time, India's oil bill and our IP bill uh, will be roughly the same. And, and uh, Mark Getty of, of Getty Images, uh, in, in around 95 or 96 observed that, that, uh, that uh, IP is the oil of the 21st century. Okay, and, and I think that's a very important observation. And you can read that statement in, in many different ways, that, that wars will be, will be fought over it, that, uh, that it'll be as expensive, that you can, you can read it in, in many different ways. And I think all of them to an extent are true. And, and we, must, uh, we must calibrate our, our policies very carefully in order to ensure that, that uh, innovation uh, isn't, 
isn't hampered by intellectual property uh, and, and that the true purpose of intellectual property, which we're told over and over and over again, uh, which are uh, development, uh, so technology transfer, which is a very important part of development, never happens uh, or hasn't happened nearly uh, to the same extent as, as the TRIPS agreement had, uh, had promised us, uh, promised the developing world when we acceded uh, to it. And, and, and least developed countries now have, uh, I believe, two years left. Uh, 2013 is their deadline to comply with the TRIPS unless th there is a further extension. So uh, we have to pay very careful attention to, uh, to those. And, and uh, uh, development, innovation, and, and we see that patent thickets have led to a rethink about, about allowing things such as business method patents and software patents in, in the West. That patent thickets have actually increased significantly uh, the cost of healthcare in the US. Uh, and, and so that's uh, something else we need to uh, look at. And creativity, which is outside really the, the scope of, of what I wanted to cover today. So uh, we must realize that IP, uh, we can't we can't take it unquestioningly that we have to be very uh, careful about what kind of IP system we, we have in the country. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you.